Welcome to Fast Effect Double Speed Magic the Gathering from ELD's Time Vault Games Discord as we're playing live over the internet. I'm actually featured in this one along with Dawn on Burn, a deck that is great for entry level into the format. It's great for people that have a lot of experience. Like It's, it's one of those decks that I think is misunderstood because people can play it and get results but there are many little decisions which can make a big big difference and uh, burn also can kind of put your opponent to the test now uh, we've got a cloud post here on my side a monastery swift spear for dawn burn punishes weak draws often winning on turn three or four and uh, can also do a number on opposing creatures, sometimes being able to play the role of, you know, a control deck with like 20 removal spells. Eidolon of the Great Revels. Once upon a time. Must have been drawn for turn there as it would have been a good response to the casting of Eidolon. Once he's on the battlefield, going to be taking two damage for this card. Euro. All right, well, Euro certainly could be part of a winning formula versus burn, gaining three life. Not at all inconsequential in a, against a deck that's full of cards that really only cause the loss of life. We've got a Candelabra, and then an Untap. And we'll see if there's any Smash to Smithereens main deck. That would be pretty devastating. A Lava Spike to the face. Skewer the Critics. And five more damage. And no Fire Blast, but sitting at 3 life is not where you want to be versus Burn. Pretty much impossible to not be dead without something pretty strong here. Let's see what we got. So floating a colorless after this euro. All right, so gaining six or gaining. Oh, you got to lose the two anyways off of the Eidolon. Whew. All right, so up to four. Getting a land drop. Euro's going to die. And facing down at least three damage from Dawn. So this fetch land not going to matter unless some life gain happens. And passing the turn, if Dawn has literally anything, it's game over. Lava Spike. A fetch. Oh, and he's got a lightning bolt as well in response. So burn, taking that one down, had the creatures on board, also had the burn. I mean, that is a pretty brutal game there. Uh, I actually added in some Hydro Blasts after getting just snuffed out here by Dawn. I believe it was Dawn on burn. Um, Apologies if it was not, but uh, this is a really tough matchup. Decided to add a, a I believe, three Hydro Blasts uh, to the sideboard just as a way of dealing with the early threats and also, of course, stopping Price of Progress, which is a just ridiculous card. 
against Europost or any any of the Cloud Post decks. I mean, your game plan is getting a bunch of non-basic lands on the battlefield. For several turns, it's not even like a Dark Depths deck where, you know, you can get them out there for a little bit and then they go away. I mean, that is just part of your formula is having like four or five non-basic lands on the battlefield. So that's kind of... If you don't do that, your deck's not going to work. You know what I mean? Like, if you don't have the cloud posts out, your deck is actually just hot garbage. Um, I suppose there's an argument that you could try and find some way to cobble together a win with your your elves and your euros and your prime times and this ragtag assortment of green creatures, but, I mean, that is not going to stand up to burn in all likelihood. So we'll go ahead and skip the sideboarding here, but Blue Elemental Blast, along with, uh, let's see what else I have here. My sideboard's right in front of me. I got Flusterstorm's a consideration, Walking Ballista, and uh, possibly Dismember, though that feels like that can't really be right to bring in against Burn. I've got a couple of Dismembers in the sideboard, uh, but paying for life against Burn is it's a heavy, heavy price. The Goblin Guide playmat. Fair warning. You know, if you see somebody playing a Goblin Guide playmat, there's a it's a better than 50-50 chance that they are on burn. They are just letting you know. And they don't really care that you know. That is my experience. In general, like even like Thalia playmats and stuff, like that does tend to be my experience. I I don't really see like control players trying to get people by playing, you know, with a goblin guide playmat. It just doesn't seem to be a thing that people are super into. Uh, we've got a elf setting up some potential life gain later on if it can stick around. Might not be the worst thing in the world to eat a bolt or chain lightning. Monastery swift spear. And no attack. I almost like attacking there. Just putting me on a uh, situation where, like, if you have a free spell, it's just devastating. Some people won't block. Lightning Bolt targeting... And now a fetch. So two lands in the graveyard. And going to go ahead and use the Elvish Reclaimer in response to save him. So this lightning bolt may be part of the equation to remove this. Elf, but I mean, if he sticks around, he'll be a problem for our Monastery Swift, Pe Swift Spear moving forward and can also fish out some Glimmer Posts to gain some life. Possibly even a Glacial Chasm. Well, that's a card I have not been thrilled with in this current build. I used to love that card. And so far, I haven't been super happy with it. All right, so down to 16... Another cloud post. Elvish Reclaimer. Potential blocker. Is he actually going to get used now? All right, so Candelabra, one floating. And that is just going to probably untap a cloud post. All right, so three mana available. Going to have the option of using the elf to potentially untap with a ton of mana. Oh, no, but smash to smithereens. Gross. Taking three damage, losing that candlestick. That would have been a pretty nice untap step. Three cloud posts. 
Could have been enough to do pretty much anything in the game, including cast Emrakul along with that Candelabra. And a lightning bolt to the face. So right now just a 3-4 for this Monastery Swift Spear. And Dawn needing to pass a Brainstorm during the end step. And this Elvish Reclaimer can actually get the Shuffle as well. Brainstorm plus Shuffle, just the best combo in the game. Nine mana from just these three lands. Ooh, and Candelabra. Oh, and a, a third Candelabra. So we had one smashed. And now there's just going to be a ton of mana. Untap everything. Floating a blue or green. And actually not pursuing additional colored mana, which is interesting. Oh, well, you don't really need to when you have an Emrakul. And once upon a time. And uh, this should do. This is probably going to be good enough. Caracas being found with this Golos. Oh, sorry. If Caracas being found with the Elvish Reclaimer and Emrakul wiping the board, bounce back to hand and recast. So I actually had these win icons incorrect there. Don picking up the first game, Europost assembling infinite turns with Emrakul. We're going to game three. Don on the play. See what type of draw he ends up with. The one of the more important plays that game was definitely that Elvish Reclaimer being able to survive Lightning Bolt. That was a tough one. That's the type of thing where if you can sequence it where you're able to respond to the fetch. I mean, it's tough. I mean, once the Elvish Reclaimer gets two lands in the graveyard, the sacrificing is actually part of the activation. So you can't actually interact there very effectively. You have to respond to like that first fetch land. The sake land actually prior to the, the colon in that rules text means that's just a payment. I mean, you're, you're not going to be able to do, you're not going to be able to fit a lightning bolt in prior to the land going to the graveyard. It's, it's just going to happen. And Don... Going to five. Five on the play. I mean, that actually feels like it probably... This game may very well favor Euro post At a mold of five. Looks like he's actually debating one drops. I'm guessing it's Goblin Guide and Monastery Swift Spear. And indeed, the Goblin Guide pushes through two damage. Does not give an extra land. Once upon a time. Firing off.
and opting for a glimmer post and thinking about playing a candelabra and actually just going to jam it. Maybe wrong. Candelabra in this deck very often you want to hold on to until you can actually use it to get the bonus. Oh, and just eating a smash of smithereens. Just giving a target for an otherwise dead card. Tropical Island coming down. And now Monastery Swift Spear. And three damage coming in. Elvish Reclaimer on top. And a Once Upon a Time. I'm going to grab that Reclaimer. It does, so essentially just paying two to draw a card there. Down to 11, facing down some actual pressure. Four cards in the graveyard. And now Euro gaining three. And Vesuva copy Glimmer Post to gain two more. And that's a pretty significant turn here. Going back up to 15 life against an opponent who's mulled to five on burn. That may have just pushed the game out of reach. Three damage. No card draw. Another Elvish Reclaimer on top. And this guy's going to ensure that Euro can come online next turn very easily. This Cascading Cataract. Going to be able to filter some mana. And at 12 life here, Euro coming back may be insurmountable with this board. Gaining three more life and then also having a 6-6 six, six blocker. This is round three. The winner of this is going to go on to the finals of the tournament. Lightning Bolt to the face. Skewer the critics. We've got two prowess here. Going down to six. Oh, and crop rotation. Ditching Tropical Island. Oh, and another situation here with the Elvish Reclaimer surviving burn. So a skewer the critic thrown at the Elvish Reclaimer. Going to eight. Paying a life for the fetch land. And sending both. There's a brainstorm. Getting a land. Right now, three damage coming in from the Monastery Swift Spear. So Fire Blast would be lethal. That would be exact damage. Be four and four. Only one card left in hand. If an untap step happens, it's going to be game over. Oh, and just blocking Goblin Guide, reliving the horror. Of course it's Fire Blast. 
Oh, and look at this. What a way to die. What a way to die. Unbelievable. Hydroblast in hand. And just going to go ahead and get KO'd. Absolutely brutal. Got to make the right block there. Untap. Untap and win. Or just go down in flames exactly according to Burns' plans there. So that is brutal. I think that's actually Euro. Yeah, that is Euro plus Hydroblast backup. That is... That is brutal. Oh, and prime time in hand as well. Wow, just reliving the pain here of just the worst block that I've made in in quite some time. I'd have to go back a ways to find a worse block there. Wow. Binary choice, win or lose. Sometimes they're just going to pick the wrong one and... Uh, Monastery Swift Spear plus Fire Blast for exact lethal as Don moves on to the finals of our FNM. That is all for this one, but don't worry, there is a lot more. Uh, you can check out our older videos, and we're always putting out new videos from ELD's Time Vault Games in Bellingham, Massachusetts. If you want to help the channel, of course, you can like, subscribe, share, tap that notification bell so you can know uh, the next time our new videos come out. Thanks for watching.